Hey everyone. Well, it's time for a Let's Talk video. I haven't done one of these in a while. I've done a ton of uh, Ollie Plays videos and um, thanks for joining me on those. They're really a lot of fun to do, but um, every now and again, I like to do a video where I talk about game development, my journey and other thoughts I have on the um, vast topic that is game development. And sometimes I like to delve into my history as a developer and designer and, and just life experiences. And today's one of those days. So um, the background music for today's videos is going to be a bunch of random songs from the Swords and Sandals collection. So uh, if you hear anything in the background that you haven't heard before, um, that's what it is. Um, it's quite, um, the volume's low, so it's not too distracting. All right, so what I want to talk to do today about is a game that never was. Or in fact, a game that would become Swords and Sandals 5. But in this version, it was much, much more ambitious. For what I want to tell you today about is Sword and Sandals World, which was going to be the Sword and Sandals casual MMO. I had been planning an online version of Sword and Sandals where you and friends could um, interact in a gladiator arena and have adventures together. Uh, this first came out in 2009, uh, about a year and a half or so after the release of Sword and Sandals 4. Sword and Sandals 4 was received modestly. Um, some people loved it, some people didn't love it. Um, and I'd been sort of moved on to other projects in the company and uh, it was decided that perhaps um, let's give it another go and, and build a Swords and Sandals that um, really might ha have some longevity and, and recapture the early glory of the series. And around this time, this is you know 2009, 2010, there was a lot of popular browser-based games uh, that were MMOs, you know, massively multiplayer online for, for those who are not sure what that term is. And games like Club Penguin and Adventure Quest and Dragon World, I think was another one, uh, were all very popular games where people could uh, log in to instances of the game and have adventures and see other characters in the game and, you know, interact with them and that kind of thing. And uh, these sites were getting huge bits of traffic and I thought why not Sword and Sandals why can't we do that and so I sat down and wrote up a big design document and and started doing some prep work on on this game and you know looking back it was, it was quite an interesting time um, to actually have that luxury to actually sit down and research something and prep it for quite a while before you even start on it uh, in the end, the game was changed due to many different factors, the changing landscape, the rise of mobile, uh, internal things at the company that um, were beyond my control. And it ended up becoming Swords and Sandals 5 Grail of Antares, which is very much a single player game and doesn't resemble the original vision at all. Um, in its own right, quite a cool game, but uh, wow, it would have been fun to have made this one. So, um, that's all I have really, unfortunately, are fragments of the original game. Nothing playable, nothing even as a video. All I have is bits of artwork and a design document um, that is somehow kind of slightly corrupted and I can read fragments of it. So it's almost like being an ar archaeologist and, and finding, you know, the fragments of some lost work. Um, so... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through some of the screenshots and just talk through my vision for the game. Uh, firstly, what I'm going to look at is um, the design document. I'm going to read out to you a bit of my original vision for it. So um, what we have here, 2009, um, the game was supposed to be a casual MMORPG set in the Swords and Sandals universe, expand the version of Swords and Sandals taking the basic concept of multiplayer fights and adding a world players can wander around and explore and interact with each other. Uh, you'll be able to join guilds, learn a profession, and participate in unique events during the year, seasonal fest festivities, etc. Built in uh, Flash, of course, like everything was, uh, in using SmartFox server, which was the multiplayer system we used for Swords and Sandals 3, um, which infamously fell over and um, we lost all, this, uh, all the people playing it at the time. So that was, you know, not the best idea. Um, if the first phase of the game is successful, the gates of the town will be unlocked and the greater world of Brando will be available to the players with many more quests, dungeon adventures and so on. 
Building the game in a modular fashion will allow us to add content and roll it out continuously. Uh, I have a fairly extensive backstory, lore, and world to really build this into a massive game if the engine is done right. So this is a little pitch document that I basically wrote, um, and I'm, I'm going to show you it on this screen here for um, for those who are curious. Let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, so this is what I've just been reading to you. Um, that's the development team, and, the, and basically the flow of the game, achievements, some technical specs. Um, I, I kind of base it very largely in part on Adventure Quest and also World of Warcraft, which was, you know, way more than I was going to be able to build. But I did like some of the, the, the concepts from it. Um, things about the inventory panel, combat, yeah, 2 vs 2, 3 vs 3, 4 vs 4, solo vs monsters, teams vs monsters, teams vs teams. Um, there were a bunch of screens in the, the, the world. So the starting area of the game, Fetor, is the capital city of Brandor and home to the Great Colosseum. Inspired by ancient Roman towns with Greek influence, but also spouting medieval cathedrals and Parisian buildings, it's a mishmash of architectural and cultural styles. I'm going to show you some screenshots that I did of this, or basically early um, paint job, you know, Microsoft Paint, uh, pretty awful. Um, basically concept art which i would then eventually give to an artist to pretty up but uh, at this version it was just me getting in my head so we had all like a bunch of areas from the coliseum um amphitheater merchant quarter there would be a city gates a bridge out of town crossroads palace cathedral a mausoleum for the dead the rich district a pier a lake spirit caverns ooh! <laughs> and um i started talking about you know what there was there was a forum um and what the look and feel of these things yeah then i went on to like the uh the game world the planet's name is tritonia content will focus on this brand all this is still you know in existence today like i've, I've fleshed out brand and tritonia a lot more since then but even uh, way back earlier than this i had a lot of um the lore and the, the world of swords and sandals in my head that i never really shown you in the games now next i want to show you a bunch of um, the screenshots from the game so what we have let's have a look first of all what's that doing I'm gonna load up what was oh why is it showing you that it's weird oh yeah so Heroes of Brandor, that was the tentative title for the game. Um, as you can see, it has the V, which would become the uh, Sword and Sandals 5 logo. Um, I've been sort of working on, you know, is this going to be Sword and Sandals 5 or Sword and Sandals World? It was called Sword and Sandals World, but I thought it'd be cool to have a tagline and then the way World of Warcraft does it, do expansions for it and, and rename it different things. That logo, still the same one as today. So we also have a world map and some of you have seen this this is the world map from crusader but with the names of the provinces on it uh you can see here fator this is the capital and the idea would be that you would be able to expand and, and go to different towns and fight in arenas and explore defeat monsters fight world bosses that kind of thing it's funny to think that i was you know trying to do this because i was basically one art one person with maybe an artist and a back-end programmer there was i don't know 15 people at the company but everyone was working on different things swords and sandals was my baby and my baby alone and you know with the occasional bit of art so to think that i could build this was ambitious at best and that was part of the problem and i think after a while uh, there was a tough decision to be made and with the rise of mobile uh this just uh, stop being viable and I had to then turn it into something else so it actually the game shifted a few times so I'm going to show you a few screens to navigate here we have gladiator concept so yeah this is what the gladiator uh, was going to look like just sketched up like that um, these two options this ended up being the option we use for the um, the, that mobile version that I released in 2012, which I just did an Ollie Plays video on. Um, quite casual, quite um, 
almost generic, I'd say. This one over here was another art style, which could have been interesting to go with. So, we also have some sketches. This was the original sketch of um, Sir Belgrave, who was going to be a gladiator trainer. Um, a guy called Nathan Wong did, Wong did that. He um, was a great graffiti artist who was working as a web designer, but you know, it was actually quite a talented artist. And you know, I thought it'd be great to work with him, but it didn't end up happening. He did a few other bits of art, like for a character called Iron Hawk, who would be the um, ended up being the weapons keeper in uh, Sword and Sandals Five. And we also had, uh, I think that was meant to be Arglax. And he is like a, a baboon. <laughs> I don't know what the baboon was for. It's like, yeah, why not? Let's have, you know, because we've got a lot of sort of animal men in the uh, world of swords and sandals. So we also have, oh yeah, here's the stuff I wanted to show you. Um, maps oh i got yeah okay let's show you this this was the uh conversation screen um you can see there this that's uh one of the shadow lords from ultima uh placeholder art and the idea was that you know you could chat to characters and have an ultima style conversation like clad in heavy black robes and shrouded in shadow this enigmatic figure towers above you all you can make out beneath its hood are two cold but brightly blazing eyes that seem to gaze into your very soul. Mysterious Spectre says, What's up, player? Not much, man. Chilling feck off. So obviously I wasn't taking that too seriously. But placeholder stuff, right? So um, the idea was... Let's see if I can find... Okay, here. So this was going to be like um, the gladiator shop area. Behind that wall were the shops. Here's two little gladiators actually punching on. Um, that was like a ramp up, I think. This is what it, an example of the um, MS Paint style art that I used to do uh, for the designs. You can see up here a World of Warcraft style um, energy and uh, health bar. And down there would be your, your skills. And you can see right there is actually a, a cool down in effect. I actually had this working to a point where uh, you could walk around point and click and you could click on characters, talk with them and fight with them. And they were all controlled by another com by the computer, but I did in fact um, have just the beginnings of the multiplayer st stuff happening when I had to wrap it up. We have another example of that. And this is with a whole bunch of people. And that's uh, the, the Iron Colossus. Um, from Sword and Sandals Crusader, uh, guarding the entrance to the mines. It, and here's a bunch of gladiators um, all moving around the mines. And they scaled, so they got a little bit bigger as you came closer and they got smaller as you went um, further away. Uh, there'd be a map button, a couple of different attacks that the player had learned. You know, this is quite a fun engine. i got to say, the I was really enjoying making it and, and having that sort of, you know, the real-time battle was quite different to um, the sort of usual sword and sandals turn-based stuff, and you know I wish I'd been able to keep up with it. So we also have what's that? Oh yeah, this is um, the inventory screen and the cat players. Yeah, so things like armor value, durability, um, resistances. This ended up being some of it was in Sword and Sandals 5, but a lot of it was lost. Um, but you could store things on each different part of your body. We also have... Oh yeah, here's funny. <laughs> that is actually... This was working. This was really cool. I had all these gladiators versus a, a giant who was just basically the same sprite but bigger. And each one... Um, all the red guys are in the same team, all the green guys are in the same team, and the purple... Uh, shadowed guys were in the same team as well so it was teams versus a giant monster and you can see that little number there of damage going up so this was all working and he had a fireball and some whirlwind attack and it's cool because this giant walked around and these guys all were competing to see which uh who could take him down um, the fastest and this was layout of the town Let's zoom in on that a little bit 
It's hard for you to see this, but you have a Colosseum here. You have the palace steps, a, a high bridge, the palace entrance, throne room, your tower, the crypts, the temple, the e exit entrance to the world, uh, gladiators' quarters, baths, tunnel. Uh, there was like a beast amphitheater on the edge of a cliff and a pit, a barracks, training grounds. So quite a um, quite a complete gladiator ludus. Basically, I'd been watching a lot of the TV show Spartacus at the time and was really inspired by that. And, you know, I, um, I love that show and um, it, it really it, it influenced much of the design in Sword and Sandals. And that was kind of what I was going for and the intrigue of uh, being in a Ludus and competing against other Ludus and Gladiators. And I tried to bring a little bit of that into Sword and Sandals 5, but it ended up uh, being a bit of an afterthought. And aside from Reg the Hammer, who trains you a little bit in the beginning, there's not a lot of Gladiator training stuff in the game. One day, though, maybe I will come back to that because I think it is a pretty cool idea and hasn't been something that's been done that much of. So, what else have we got here? Um, oh, yeah, this is, here's a character with some armor and weapons on him. Um, it's a weird sort of kind of hobbity looking character. In the end, looking back at this, I, I hate the big head, that sort of chibi look. I don't think it works well at all. Um, but you can see there your different weapons and, and the value. Um, quite a cool little inventory system, actually. Don't mind that. Uh, Huntley's ar Armory, of course, who was in Swords and Alice 5. So a lot of it was transitioned. Not all of it was lost. And we also have a bunch of maps. So these were what the maps were. And I'm going to go through these for you. Um, bring them on screen now. Okay, so this was like going to be uh, a temple almost that you could, you know, pray to Sphericles. And there's Spher Sphericles, the Titan in the background, the classic Titan. Um, this is the mausoleum. So you could go down there and um, pay tribute to the fallen gladiators. And then that would have different sort of um, things you go down there at night. We have the outside of the Colosseum. So you could, you know, Perhaps you could talk to other um, gladiators out here and maybe even bet on the matches and there would be people hawking foods and, um, you know, jugglers and that kind of thing. You also have a little bit further along. So how the game worked was from screen to screen, you could walk around. So that previous screen at the Colosseum, uh, you'd walk around it. And then as you left it, you'd see it in the background here and you would see that's the Temple of Spherocles up there. And this is, uh, I think, it might be the exit of the town. They had all this working too. You know, you could actually walk around from screen to screen. A little bit like how Adventure Quest does it, or even as far back as game, the Sierra games like King's Quest and so on. Um, there's uh, an obelisk, and that might be the entrance to the Ludus there. Yeah, that's the exit. So you leave this part and then you'd be in a different province heading to, um, you know, Gallowstones or Dracondir or even Edengarth or somewhere like that. You know, famous places from around Brandor. Uh, another one, this is the entrance to the Colosseum, which is kind of cool. I can always imagine, you know, the, the nervous gladiators walking up and this gate opening before they step out into the arena. You know, some of them wetting themselves in fear. Uh, this was a entrance to i think a monster pit i think there was going to be monster dens that you could um, have monsters live in and feed them and you know bigger monsters and smaller monsters flying monsters there even nautical monsters yeah another area in the ludus where you could walk around i hadn't planned all of them out they had names but i didn't know exactly what all of them were going to do um so that's that's a oh, i think this might be the sort of eating quarters there's a lift that would go up and down and um some rooms for gladiators to talk in oh yeah here's the actual the mess hall so that led down here and gladiators could uh, sit at tables and eat and i'd planned to have sort of you know fights in in here and like almost brawls there's a, like someone serving uh drinks in there and you'd be able to sort of take on gladiators that had beaten you in the Colosseum earlier. Um, you know, if you were unhappy about it, you could, you know, clock them in the back of the head with uh, your tankard of beer. We also have, this was the the um, 
the giant beast arena at the edge of the cliff. Uh, you can see the scale is immense as far as that's the doors and your gladiator would be tiny. The beasts would be, you know, vast things on the edge there and that's where everybody would watch the fights. And of course you'd be able to push them off the cliff. Got to have that. Um, there was another lift that went down to uh, a pit where you would fight, um, you know, dragons and things that you know lived underground down here so i'd set different arenas up of different um different sizes you know so we have where am i oh yeah so this was leading to that uh when you went underground you could go into some caves down this led to that pit and this was to another mines area i believe And here's the mines that we showed earlier without all the other gladiators in it. Because the idea was you can, you know, craft things. And, you know, all those games had crafting and inventory items that you could, you know, farm out. Um, here would be your room to start with. Just a humble bed and a bookshelf and, you know, a, a chamber pot and the lift going up and down. Because it's a fantasy world, so, you know, it has some kind of technology like that. Uh, the baths, as all gladiators have, you know, where, you know, you have intrigue and, and politics because a lot of these you know ancient worlds so much of it was the politicking and the betrayals like the julius caesar moments that kind of thing and i was always fascinated by that and i added the barbs in for that reason you could actually swim too it's kind of cool i had a little swimming animation where it'd be in there and you know swimming forward like this half in and out of the water so as you can see it did a lot of work just on you know prepping it Another arena where you walk down, and I think this was like a, a team battles arena. Uh, this was a, a cell um, where you could chat to a, you know, prisoners and so on, interrogate them or free them. Because I was planning on, you know, a story as well as just the sort of the, you know, the multiplayer stuff. Because you know, all MMOs need some kind of story. And. This, as you can see here, has some finished artwork, which was ended up being from uh, Swords and Sandals, uh, the mobile one. Might have meant to be Swords and Sandals 3, actually, but that was a pit, as you can see, and I've just added a little staircase to it. And looks like deeper into the mines here, and I do remember programming this bit, so walking down and having someone stop you when you try to go any further, say, Gladiator, go back to the Ludus. Um, so... That's about all the artwork I have to show you from this game. Um, in, in the end, I think it was probably too ambitious for the time I had and the resources I had. And also the world sort of started to move on from uh, browser games. Um, and who knows, I think it would have done quite well, but you know, perhaps I'll remake it. That stuff is still all there. You know, when, even when a game uh, isn't made, it, still lives on in your mind and you know there's dozens and dozens of games like that that i've you know come up with and gotten you know to various stages of completion and had to abandon for whatever reason and it's you know it's a little sad because you know these are, these do become your children and you spend all this time with them and um sometimes you know you you do feel a bit sad when you revisit it and go oh that would have been cool um so what I was going to say was, um, yeah, this game ended up being Swords and Sandals 5, which was a dungeon crawler, and uh, not much of this version remains. But one day, one day I might revisit it. There, there is a huge MMO, not an MMO, a huge uh, Ultima-style game that I'm planning on making in the future called Constellation Mirror, and I've done at least twice or three times as much prep work for it as this game, and it's still just in my mind i've done some art i've done some you know a 40 or 50 page design document for it and that is hugely ambitious but i can't cannot make it until i have the uh, financial means because it's something that would take two or three years and i just don't have that luxury unfortunately right now but who knows one day who, who knows maybe we'll be talking in a few years and you go oh yeah constellation mirror ollie was talking about that back in 2018 and here it finally is so that's it for today. I just wanted to talk about um, a game that never was or never came to fruition. Um, it n never saw the light of day, but it still lives on in my mind. And now you know about it. So if you're a fan of Sword and Sandals, that fills in a bit, a little bit more of your knowledge for the game. Um, 
Tonight I'm going to play a game too, actually. I think I might play uh, Warcraft, just the original RTS game, for a bit of fun. So uh, tune in later and I'll have another Ollie Plays for you. If you like these videos and uh, you're enjoying chatting with me, uh, even though it feels like a bit of a one-sided conversation, but please leave comments. I do love reading them and try to reply to as many as I can. And of course, um, subscribe and tell your friends because um, the more subscribers I have, the more content I can bring. Um, much love to you all. Thanks for sticking around today and uh, bye for now.